Hi, I'm Julie from Fabric Art and Quilt Shop in Sacramento. Thank you for joining us for our new block of the month called Vintage Rose. Um, this is month one, and um, I just wanna go through some of the things that were in your packet. Each um, packet will have a color picture of what the full uh, quilt will look like. There is also um, another color picture, which just labels each month which block you will be making. And then you will also receive a uh, list of what fabrics will be used in your quilt. They will also be numbered with the SKU number, which will make it a little bit easier to determine which um, pieces you're going to be using each time. Jill did um, write up a welcome letter, so please take a minute to read that because there are some little, um, uh, little clues in there. This, you get your fabric this month, but you're not gonna be using all of this fabric this month. Some of the um, cutting directions will say um, to, some of the cutting directions, especially for this um, pretty black rose here, it will give you several, several different things to cut. However, this month, the only thing you need out of all those cuts is one two and a half inch square, which will be the center of your block. The others, um, it says save for block two. One of them says save for block eight. I did not cut those this month because, um, and you will notice in the letter that um, Jill gave to you, the ones for block two, it looks like they're gonna be using like a square and a square, and the ones for block eight is a half square triangle. I do not have those patterns with me at the moment, so I don't know, um, you know what size those, those are going to be. And if you use specialty rulers, these cutting directions won't, won't work. So if you don't use the, cup, the specialty rulers, you can cut exactly like this says. But if you wanna use a square and a square ruler, or a half square triangle, or the Studio 180 Flying Geese Ruler, um, just cut according to the directions for this month. So, like I said, um, the, begin, the center of the block, you have um, your two and a half inch square center, then you have a square and a square, and then another square and a square, and I think this particular block here is called an economy block. I made this, I just got back from vacation and I hate to admit it, but I could not find my square and a square ruler. So I made this according to the pattern directions. And when you do the square in a square, you're gonna start with, um, you know, you look at your directions here and you start with your two and a half inch square, which I have, um, here's your two, not the same fabric. I didn't want to cut up my pretty fabric for the samples, but you've got your two and a half inch square. And then um, from the cream dot, it said to cut a three and a quarter inch square and then cut it twice on the diagonal so that you end up with four quarter square triangles. So when you're doing this, this one here, take your square Gently finger press it to find the center. Do the same thing with one of these little triangles. Finger press it and then match up the, the um, creases. When I stitch it, I'm gonna stitch with this side up because this is my, this square here is my straight line. That's the one that I want to uh, make sure is perfect. So once you've sewn one on, you're gonna repeat the process um, with the other side. The cutting directions say to press that seam open, which I did here. Um, so I, you press it open and then you're gonna repeat it on the other side. Then you can just trim the dog ears off. Just take your ruler, make sure that you still have a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here, and then cut those dog ears off. Um, and then on the next, oops, for the green leaves, um, you're going to cut a, well, as soon as I find it, it says to cut two, two and seven eighths inch squares. Um, if your sewing is perfect, if you are always accurate, you've got a perfect quarter inch seam, you cut perfectly, go ahead and cut that two and seven eighths. I am not that way. 
so I cut it three inches. That's only an eighth of an inch bigger, but that's plenty. So you're gonna cut those two squares, and in those squares, you're only gonna cut them once on the diagonal. And then you're gonna put them together just like you did this. You start with, um, you know, one on this side, sew it, this side, and sew it. And again, when you're sewing, you wanna sew with this side facing you so that when you stitch your seam, you can see your little X here. You wanna make sure that you go right through that or just a thread above it so you don't cut off your points. And then you can press those, and I did press that um, out. So that will go there in the center. The next step is flying geese. These four here are flying geese. And if you like to use the Studio 180 uh, wing clipper ruler, you can do that and you can make four at once. I'm not gonna um, go over how to use that ruler because not everybody has one, um, but I would, would recommend that, especially if you have one like I did, I had one for probably two years before I ever opened it up and looked at it and figured out how to use it. That's the only way I like to make flying geese now because they come out accurate every time. Um, so if you don't have that ruler, then follow the directions in your cutting guide for um, your flying geese. And I, here's another sample. You're gonna cut a four and a half by two and a half inch rectangle, and you're doing the folded corners um, where you take your, your square. You can either, you know, I'll, I'll show you here. You can either gently finger press it. You can take it to the ironing board and crease it so you've got you know, something to follow. I like to use a friction pen and I'll just draw a line corner to corner. Put that on there, stitch it, iron it, and the friction line will go away. And then you iron it up and you trim it. Before you trim, flip this over and make sure that everything is still straight. You don't have, it's not like that where you've got a lot of green poking out because if you cut this off, this is your perfect square, your perfect rectangle size. So you wanna make sure that is still perfect. So once you're sure of that, then go ahead and trim that a quarter of an inch, and then you need to put the other one on. And again, you've got your line, turn it up like that. Once you've sewn it, flip it over again before you trim it to uh, make sure that it's, it's accurate. One thing I do like to do when I'm sewing these folded corners, I like to start at this end rather than at the point. Sometimes the point, if you stitch going this way on your machine, sometimes that point likes to get, you know, eaten up by the throw plate. If you sew it this way, you're fine. If this point is not there, you end up with a wonky piece. So you're gonna make four of those. And then the next step is, you know, look at your um, pattern picture. I had it right here for the layout lay it out you've got your um, cornerstones here which are you know cut according to the directions and once you have this in this should be an eight and a half inch square then you're going to put the sashing on and these are folded corners again as well and i'm just going to show you when you're pressing these press them in opposite directions so that when you're sewing this seam it nests nightly, nicely. And then um, I did press this open because it does eliminate the bulk. And then you just press it up. And when you're putting these on, make sure that your seam lines up with the point of your flying geese, like here and here. So I would just, you know, pin, pin this, make sure you're lined up there, and then pin it all along there and stitch it. And when you're done, you should have a 12 and a half inch square. So that is it for this month and I'll see you again next time. And as always, if you have any questions, give us a call or stop in and see us. Thank you.